Hey, it's your brother D on the VWB World Famous Venice Beach Boardwalk. Today, we're talking to one of the OG Venice Boardwalk performers, Harry Perry, legendary Harry Perry. Harry, say what's up to the people. Lots of love, happiness. We hope some sunshine. <laughs> Beautiful, I love that, Harry. Hey, so Harry, my first question to you is, when did you first break onto the Venice uh, scene, man? Uh, it's a long story, but my first day here was in 1974. A sometime in April, we were playing at the Rainbow and this, this other kid decided that we should come down here. So you were in a band at that time? Well, I wouldn't call it a band, but there was another guy, Craig, who used to play with me. We played together, created songs and played out here. And what was it like when you first came out here back, back then? There used to be a pavilion out here. There's a lot of changes. See all these mounds? That used, that's the pavilion all ground up. There used to be an oil rig over there. Oh, seri that's seriously? Methane, yeah, that was. And after 20 years of, of going to uh, planning commission meetings, not me, myself, but some other guys, they got the city to take out the old oil rig, not renew their lease, and build the skate park. That is awesome, man. We have you to thank for the skate park. I can tell you, you, you love Venice. Now, let me ask you this, because I have been out here for uh, uh, about 24 years here in uh, Los Angeles. And I, when I first saw you and heard you, I fell in love with how you played because I dug the sound. Um, you know, I grew up in the 80s, like, you know, uh, and I was inspired by Eddie Van Halen, for example. But what was, what was your uh, coming up as far as guitar? What inspired you to play guitar? And who inspired you? Oh, well, the person that inspired me to really be a performer was James Brown. Because I got to see James Brown and the Fabulous Flames, I'm old enough, live on stage, you know. And that was just a phenomenal experience in itself. I can imagine James Brown, wow, I'm impressed. People don't, there was not video like there is now. So his, the real essence of the power and the energy and the excitement it's like in the ethers. It's there, but it's not like everybody has a little video thing in their pocket now. You just had to be there. You had to be there. It's, it, it, his performance inspired so many artists. It was so powerful and so profound. And his pl the players, that he, he got them to play. He worked with them and rehearsed them and got them to play that sound that he put out. And even today, if you put on James Brown, everybody wants to move. Yeah. Yes, I love that. That 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 actually is a great. Uh, uh, that actually surprised me as far as you uh, you citing James Brown as an influence, and I never would have thought of that. But yeah, I can see it. I, players, everything. You know. Okay. The whole the, the whole band. The whole thing, but especially him and his energy on top of it. Yes. Yeah. That, that was a, a, a piece of creativity beyond Beethoven. And so, let me ask you about just final thing about Venice. So you've been out here for a good minute now. You are an OG on Venice Boardwalk. What is it about Venice that keeps you coming out here specifically than any other beach? Today is like a winter day. <laughs> We're not in Ohio. This isn't Detroit. That's where Motown used to be. If we were in Detroit today, we, we couldn't stand out here. We'd suffer, you know. And so that means that creativity has has a different foundation. You know, you can be outside and create and have an experience of people that in, when, in the places where there's winter, it's, you're just locked away. Now, is there anything uh, 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 particular in Venice here that you see that's different from any of the other beaches? Yeah. I went to court for a lot of years with Jingles and some attorneys and it started out that we couldn't collect money. This officer walked up to us one day and said, if we see money exchanging hands, you're going to jail. But now you can do your art and collect money. And even I think that it's gone as far as in California where you, there's lots of availability to sell on the street. But especially here, I was playing guitar. My original songs, I went to Corlick Engineering on Santa Monica Boulevard and pressed them into 45s. Albums are too big to carry around and, and sold them. But Venice is a place there are lots of people all year long, every day. Absolutely. 
And so there was a, one of the first people that bought one of my 45s was Sting. Are you serious? Did you guys hear that? Yeah. <laughs> So Sting he, actually bought one of Harry Perry's first 45s. He wasn't the Sting that he is now. It was just like a guy playing at Madame Wong's. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Madame Wong's. Yes, yes. Is that where he used to, to play, actually? Yeah. No, he played there. He was, uh, you know, that was just one of the clubs to play here. But I remember he was playing there. But that, that was before, you know, the recordings that made him. The sting that we know today. Yeah, with a residency in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead and get this uh, uh, shirt. Very hey, one more time so they can catch you on the social Harry media. What is it? HarryPerryBand.com. HarryPerryBand.com, guys. HarryPerryBand.com. This is mosaic. psychedelic. Bernard That's what, style. There you go. So, hey, guys, thanks so much for, for checking this out and hanging out with us and Harry Perry. We will check you next time. Be blessed. Don't you feel lonely? Let me know you're ready.